You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the Packernet Podcast. I am your host and resident panelist, as always, Ryan Schlipp. Check us out online, packernet.com. Find me on Twitter, pack underscore that Well, happy Thursday, everyone. I should I need to check every day before I do that because I'm wrong about, what, 42% of the time, somewhere in there, give or take. I figure if I'm going to call myself dumb, I might as well do something real smart, like be like 42%. Was it impressive when I did? Were you, okay. Well, anyways, I got actually a decent amount of stuff on the docket, and I don't even think we can get to all of it. So, plus, starting about, well, exactly 17 minutes late. So, let's get started with a little bit of news and notes from the NFL. Nothing super interesting, but um, Jadavian Clowney is going to the Browns. I I tend to think bust might be a little unfair, but not much. I've said numerous times on this podcast how Jadavian was like the greatest prospect I've ever seen, largely because of the whole highlight reel thing, but but legitimately, I mean, he's up there with some of the highest expectations of a draft pick. They're pretty high. I mean, you knew about the name Jadavian Clowney when he came out of high school. I mean, it's similar to like Trevor Lawrence, but obviously not a quarterback. Um, Todd Gurley was kind of similar. I remember hearing about Todd Gurley in high school. And I, I don't even hardly watch college, and I wasn't into the draft as much. But you still heard the name, like, dude, there's this guy, dude. It's crazy. And that's what it was for Trevor Lawrence. Like, he came into college, and it's like, this guy's going to be one of the greatest pros in history. Like, dude, he hasn't, like, he does, I don't even know a team he's playing for yet in college. But I remember Jadavian got into the pros, and you just expect him to be the best pass rusher in football, and he just wasn't that good. Then even when he kind of came into his own, the whole thing was like, he's really good against the run, it's decent as a pass rusher. But, I mean, he's he has never had 10 sacks, even by PFF standards. And again, PFF calls half sacks full sacks. I don't even know what his... Uh, let's look at his official numbers, because I'm interested. I wonder if he even hit nine officially. Well, that's weird. He got more credit on his official stats than PFF gave him. Whatever. I guess some of those half sacks, they just say, no, nah, you're not getting that one. <laughs> so... Officially, he got to nine and a half. So he's never gotten to 10 officially or pff um ever. Which, again, sacks are not the most important thing in the world. But if you're a very, very good pass rusher, you're probably going to get there, right? It doesn't paint the full picture. There are some football players, like, I mean, Preston has gotten there, like, I think the last two years in a row, and he's not that great. It looks like at his best as a pass rusher, he was around uh, 12%. I mean, as far as his pass rush grade, his best year was 2018, 78 overall. Again, run defense, pretty solid. Um, starting in about 2015, if you remove 2019, he's been very, very good against the run. Actually, I didn't even have that in the right order. Let me try that again. Um, the last two years, <laughs> so you have to remove 2019 and 2020. So really, it's been from 2015 to 2018, he was very good against the run. 2019, he went back down to the 70s as a run defense grade. So good, not great. And then this past year was 69.9 and a 69.6 pass rush grade. So, I mean, he's not even, he wasn't even, like, good for Tennessee. He was on the cusp, and technically his overall grade was a 75, but he was aided by an 80 coverage grade, which give me a break. I'm not going to say anything bad about this flavor of Monster because I'm holding out hope that I'm going to get a sponsorship, but if I ever switch... I'm going to tell you that this is not my favorite. Blaine, I'm going to go ahead and disagree with you. I mean, it's not bad, but it has a taste very similar to something else that's disgusting. And once that gets in my mind, it's like I can't uh, upset too much already. But it just it reminds me of something that's not great. And it's like, okay, I need to get that out of my head or I can't finish this can. We'll see how it goes. Monster, it's your move. But yeah, man, he's got 32 sacks in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years. 4.5 4.5 sacks a year. I mean, he's just, he's not good. So and part of the reason I bring this up is because he's been like the prize of free agency like every year for three years now, right? Seattle got him and it's like, dude, it's crazy. And it's like, yeah, it's, I mean, you know, I mean, let's calm down a little bit. But yeah, I mean, he'll probably help. And then he was just kind of meh. 
four sacks, 58 pressures on 482 attempts, which is right at 12%, and um, his worst run defense year since his rookie year. But, you know, something. Then he's a free agent again, and, like, everybody's free. Like, dude, Tennessee might get clowny, man. It's like, yeah, that, I mean, you need him because you need something that isn't just putrid. But, again, let's calm down a little bit. And then Cleveland, again, is in the same boat where it's like, dude, we need somebody against, across from Miles Garrett bad. And then again, they get Clowney, and it's like, dude, Clowney and Miles Garrett, it's going to be crazy. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's an upgrade. Not saying he's the worst in history, but I honestly don't know 100% that he's going to be better than what Olivier Vernon gave you. I don't know that 100%. He didn't even play a full season last year, and he had three games he graded in the 70s, none in the 80s or 90s. Every other game was 60s. One, two, three, four, five games in the 60s. So... He's, he was never very good, and whatever his peak was, it's over. So the other thing that I found funny is he can be, he, he said something to the effect of, I can be defensive player of the year if I can play the whole year healthy. Nice try, dude. You, you were not healthy in 2020 and like 2014 and 2015. 2016, 17, 18, and 19, you were fine, and you were not anywhere near defensive player of the year. Not even close. Granted, those were better years, but not close, so... Just so we're all on the same page, or at least so you know where I'm at with Jadavian Clowney, I have no problem with him. If you're just in dire straits, fine. But let's just calm down because he's not only is he not good or, or not like an elite player, he never really has been. I mean, he got an elite or 87.2 was his highest overall grade in 2018, his final year with Houston. In other news, Aaron Donald busted a dude's eye. You know, I got to be honest, in, in considering. It's, it's terrible to say, but it's almost refreshing to see that news. Every single time you see that a football player has done something wrong, it's always something pathetic. It's either like beating a woman or beating a child or just something just re- like horrible. Like you're a grown man. Why don't you go do grown man stuff? Aaron Donald did grown man stuff. He's out at a bar or where, wherever he is. Some dude pops off. He turns around and busts his eye socket. Like, good for you, Aaron. Now... I, again, I'm, I'm, I'm filling in some gaps, and I don't know the full story. Maybe Aaron was the aggressor. Maybe he was acting like a psychopath. Maybe he was hitting on this guy's wife, and the guy's like, dude, that's Aaron Donald. Like, maybe I'll just let it go. And he goes over there, and he's like, hey, dude, look, man, like, could you please not, you know, it's my wife. And Aaron hauls off. That's messed up. That's not grown man stuff. But, you know, it's like football players used to get in trouble because they go out to the bar and do grown man stuff. Now they do, like, pathetic I, I, I can't even, like, I try to put like an insulting thing on it, but then I'm just being insulting. Like, I can't say it's women stuff, because obviously women don't do that stuff, but I just, I'm trying to be insulting. And I can't say little kid stuff, because kids don't even, I mean, kids don't beat women and children, and well, kids sometimes fight other kids, but that's fine. I don't know, it's, it's, it's pathetic is what it is. Spoiled, rich people with, with just no control of their emotions. They're soft is what they are. So I, I don't know, man. I mean, you know, if he's going to get a fine, I, I hope, I hope, I'm really, really hoping. According to this, there was an incident after he bumped into him. Um, you know, yeah, I've always heard that one of the things when you're a big guy is there's certain people that just in their DNA is I'm going to go after them. You know, they just walk into a bar or, or a whatever, and they're going to pop off to the biggest guy in that room just because. It's the curse of just being a big dude. It happens. I mean, you see it happen to like MMA pl- fighters and stuff. Some dude just starts running their mouth, and it's like, what is in your what is in your brain that makes you think that that's a good idea? But again, it's still just grown man stuff. All right, ding dong, brain, get out of my face. That was my alarm clock. You know, I mean, it's over something stupid, and yeah, you got to be able to walk away, and you're gonna, it's gonna hurt your career, it's gonna cost you a lot of money, it's gonna cast a dark shadow, and all this stuff, and your family's name, and the whole thing. Like, try to be cool about it. But again, it's just, it's just kind of refreshing for me. And I know that's messed up, and I shouldn't say that, but as bad as things are, as bad as everything is, to have a dude that, as far as I know, doesn't have any blemishes on his record, and the only time he's going to bow up and do what he can do, which, by the way, let's be completely honest, gentlemen, ladies, I don't, I don't know if you can identify with this, but any guy that says he can't, if you ask your husband, if he's sitting next to you, if this is true, and he says, no, he's lying. If you were as big and powerful as Aaron Donald, it would be hard to just have it, you know, in the holster all the time. 
there would be just this constant temptation. Like somebody looks at you wrong and it's like, I know, I know for a fact I could destroy you, but I won't. Somebody says something. It's like, I could just, just so easily, so easily make an example of you and it would feel amazing, but I won't. I'm just going to take a verbal beating and walk away, tail between my legs, because I don't want to get in trouble for killing a guy. So yeah, man, I mean, you bump into somebody, he's got, he's going to run his mouth about watch where you're walking, punk. And it's like, you know what? It's coming out of the holster. Just, just one time. And just blast him right in the eye. Be like, well, there you go. By the way, that kind of stuff, going off on a tangent here, that kind of stuff is important. What's that uh, comedian? Bill Burr. He had that one skit about there's civility among men because there's always a low-level threat of violence. It's not perfectly civil, but you got to watch what you say because you know that for a lot of guys, I have no interest in talking. I'm just going to hit you right in the face. It keeps things civil. Maybe you want to be a psychopath, but it's probably a bad idea. Aaron is just, he's just, he's just keeping the natural order of things. Somebody got out of line. He brought him back into place. Thank you, Aaron. Again, I'm making half of this story up, but that's what I choose to believe. To be honest, I don't want any more details. I'm fine with it. Anyways, we got more fuel for the Aaron Rodgers fire that I keep wanting to just have go away forever, but it just, it won't. To be completely honest, you guys are pushing me to the point of wanting Aaron Rodgers gone. I mean, there are fans that are also driving me nuts with this Aaron Rodgers stuff. It just, just, I mean, just, just the fighting back and forth. He needs to go. He should never go. Uh. It's like, I'm just, I'm over it. Didn't used to be this way, man. It was just Aaron Rodgers is great. Yep. Cool. That's it. That's the only thing. And we talk about Aaron Rodgers all the time, but it was just about his greatness and that's it. Via Charles Woodson, Aaron Rodgers and Packers could be headed for nasty divorce. Oh, come on, Charles. Anyways, here's a snippet, and it's it's like somebody made a little highlight video, so there's background music and some other stupid stuff, but I'm just going to play it as it is because I don't feel like finding the whole clip and then finding the part of the clip because they already did that for me, so you're just going to have to tolerate the music, but let me just play this through for you. The Packers, of course, are going to say, oh, you know, we're going to take the best player available, and, you know, this wasn't about looking to the future. Well, it, it, it is looking to the future. You know, I, I think it could be one of those situations where it, 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 get nas- it gets nasty at some point, somehow, in, in the back and forth between, you know, the Packers and Aaron's agents. And, and, and then, you know, before you know it, somehow the thing gets blown up. So, um, I mean, I certainly hope it, hope, hope it that doesn't happen. But, you know, this, 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 you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. All right, so here we go, right? Same old thing all over again. So, uh, look, we'll take it section by section, and then we'll get out of here. He starts off with, the Packers, of course, were going to say, we're not going to, you know, we're just taking the best player available. It wasn't like, it wasn't about looking to the future, but this is looking to the future. Charles is right. But to be fair, both things can be true. Every draft pick is about the future. And I do think the Packers are maybe downplaying a little bit their interest in a quarterback for the future. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. If, pa- if, if quarterback was of zero interest, if Pat Mahomes was our quarterback, they would not have traded up for Jordan Love. Absolutely not. I don't believe that for a second. I think we overplay our hand. We either overplay or underplay. Because again, everything has to be completely black or white. Either it's 100% best player available, or we're only looking at need. Usually during draft season, fans are just looking at need, 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 and they don't care about... Um, best player available, but then you have the best player available purist coming in saying, just so you guys know, it has nothing to do with need. It's everything about best player available. Both of those are nonsense. First of all, it's, again, it's not a linear board where you just take the guy at the top of the board. If that was the case, what's the point in draft in trading up? There's always going to be a top of the board. Secondly, everything is tiered, so that changes things a little bit. But even so, if you have no interest in a quarterback, there's no reason to trade up. It doesn't make any sense. You don't have to take every player on the top of your board. You know how many times the Packers probably had linebackers and running backs on the top of their board and didn't take them? Because it's just not a good positional value. By the way, that's exactly when you start trading back. When you look at it and say, we are, we are at a new tier, right? So you look at this, let's say there, there's the top tier, which are usually going on the first 10 picks or whatever. Then you got the next tier, which are like the legit first round picks. If you're at the back of the first, they may be gone by like pick 24. Well, let's say they go by pick 27, right? They're gone. We could we tried to trade up to get that last guy that's a really stellar first round pick. Now they're all gone. So now we're in the third tier and there's like 15 guys left. Let's just trade back. Granted, some are a little bit higher in this tier than others, but let's get some extra value. We're still going to be within range. I mean, we got 13 guys left. It's our pick right now. 
We could trade back 10 spots and we're guaranteed a guy in this exact same tier, you know, and pick up a third or a fourth or something. So I, I halfway agree. Charles is painting it out to be that they're lying. I do think that they're massively exaggerating. Every time they come to the, the podium, they basically downplay it, especially since Rogers won MVP. Then they became extremely, because again, they knew he's not going anywhere soon. Like he's certainly not going anywhere this year. And so they're, they're, they're much less certain about Jordan Love taking over, possibly ever, right? They saw a year of Jordan Love in which they, I don't believe, were super impressed. And they saw MVP Rogers. So it's like, well, you know. But when they made that pick, of course, it was about the future, like every pick is, but especially, I mean, specifically, this is about the quarterback future. And, and the Packers alluding to the fact that it's not is lying. He goes on to say, I know that Rodgers had to be thinking, bring me someone in here that's going to help me immediately, you know, not somebody that has to sit behind me for the next two years or three years or whatever it is. So I think he ends up ending his career in another place. I mean, one doesn't really lead to the other. I mean, it's fine if that's where it goes in his mind. Um, I don't really see it that way. I, I, I mean, Aaron Rodgers, I, I, look, he, I think he is frustrated. But I think you can be frustrated and get over it and do your job. And I think Rodgers has been very professional about that. He's been very vocal about guys that he wants to stay. And the Packers almost always move on from those guys, right? He, he lobbied for Jordy. He lobbied for Randall. He liked, uh, uh, what, Jared Cook. I don't, I don't remember exactly who, but he, you know, he lobbies for these guys. And the Packers are like, yeah, that's cool, but no, that's not your job. That's my job. And they move on, and Rodgers is like, you know, I wanted him, but that's that's the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm a quarterback. He's the GM. You know, LaFleur is the coach. McCarthy is the coach. Ted Thompson's a GM. Gutekunst is a GM. They make those decisions. I have my wants or whatever. And yeah, as a quarterback, I, I want to win, and I want somebody that's going to help me win, especially on offense, because I'm biased. Ultimately, I just want to win Super Bowls. And so, yeah, the Jordan Love thing is not his favorite pick because Jordan Love is never going to help Aaron Rodgers. It might help the Packers. And if he wants to be completely selfish or selfless, he could say, wow, that's a great pick for the future of the Packers. But he's, he wants to win. Now, Jordan Love might help the Packers win. If he's a great quarterback, he could help us win for 10, 20 years. But he doesn't help Rodgers. So, yes, Rodgers is going to hate that pick. On top of that, there's a chance that it may help to push him out. So he, he, he may really dislike that pick, but it has nothing to do with anything. That doesn't mean he's going to want to leave. He's already said he doesn't want to leave. He wants to stay. So as long as the Packers are willing to keep him, he's going to stay. So I don't really agree with that either. The fact that Rodgers is frustrated, therefore he's going to go somewhere else. He's, what are you saying? He's just going to say, I want out? Maybe. I don't know. But I, 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 don't, I don't see that. I mean, I could see it where maybe they're not seeing eye to eye and Rodgers is saying, listen, you won't make concessions for me. I won't make concessions for you. The contract is what it is. You want to keep me. You're going to give me this contract and it's going to have these guarantees and the Packers aren't going to be willing to do it. So they may come to a split at the end of his contract. That, that's as messy as I could see it getting. Other than the Packers just moving on and trading him and Rodgers just being furious and, and kind of turning into Brett Favre saying, I want to play for any team that's going to play the Packers and I'm going to go get him. That's a possibility. That's as ugly as I could see it, but it's not because of what Woodson's saying here. I just don't see Rodgers picking up his, his tools and leaving. Now, if the Packers pull the same thing in the draft again, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Getting a bunch of pieces that don't really help all that much, but I, you know, I don't, I don't, again, I don't even know what they could do outside a quarterback that Rodgers would be super mad about. You know, getting a running back in the first round would be pretty annoying. He could find a way to get excited about it, but it's like, dude, what are you doing? Which, by the way, if you're a best player available purist, there's nothing in your mind that should be telling you they won't take a running back. In fact, it makes a lot of sense. There's some really good running backs at the point that we're picking. So that's that's actually a fairly high probability. But you don't believe that, do you? Of course you don't. Because you're just trying to tell yourself that it was best player available and has nothing to do with wanting a new quarterback. But deep down, somewhere in there, you know that it's not just about best player available. For the same reason you know we're not taking a running back, or a quarterback for that matter. If Mac Jones is there and the Packers like him, why wouldn't they take him? It's just about best player available, dude. Trust the board. Nah, <laughs> come on now. You know. Uh, he goes on to say, I think it could be one of those situations where it gets nasty at some point, somehow in the back and forth between the Packers and Rodgers agents, and then before you know it, somehow things get blown up. So this, this is where, kind of maybe, but, but still not really. Right. So, yeah, it could get nasty between the agent and between the team. But I mean, it's not like Rodgers is directly negotiating with Brian Gutekunst. You have Russ Ball talking to Aaron Rodgers' agent. And Aaron Rodgers' agent is a very good agent. He's not going to be going to Rodgers like gossiping about the Packers. Can you believe these guys? They said this. This is a, this team is terrible. I can't believe. And just like poisoning the well. And then Rodgers jumps on the phone and starts screaming. And all, it just all that stuff happens in the background. 
right? And I'm sure he gets updates about what's going on and like, hey, you know, they're trying to do this. Uh, I think, you know, and they have discussions. I mean, I don't know. I mean, obviously Charles is the guy that was a pro. He would know better than me, but I, I just, I guess I don't know how, what, what is going on back and forth. What is the conversation? It has to be about his contract, right? It's between the Packers and his agent. What, what is the problem? And then he goes on with the, if there's, when there's smoke, there's fire. What's smoke though? This is the thing I really don't like is when something happens that isn't real and they say, yeah, but it's happened like 500 times. And it's like, no, because every time it comes up, it turns up, it's not real. There are cultural parallels that I probably shouldn't touch on because people are going to be very sensitive about it. But you see that all the time, especially in the, we'll just, we'll just put it under the general umbrella of politics. I can't believe this keeps happening. Mm, it doesn't look like it actually happened, though, the way that you're describing. Yeah, but it happens all the time. No, actually, the, the way that it happened this time, in which it's not as you describe it, is pretty much how it happens every time. So it doesn't actually happen very often at all. You guys just keep making it up every time and then revisiting the fact where, okay, this was kind of made up, but it still happens all the time. Look at all the other allegations. What? No, those are all fake. It's the same thing here. Yeah, but where there's smoke, there's fire. What's smoke? Well, look at all these articles. They're all made up. And again, it's not that Rodgers doesn't get fr- Of course he's frustrated. But I mean, compare it to a lot of other players. I mean, most players today are, are frustrated. Rodgers is one of the few that isn't on social media just flat out trashing his team. And yeah, he, he's kind of just, he just says what's on his mind. But I mean, people are really, really trying to push this hard. And he's under such a microscope that every little sideways comment, and he's the king of sideways comments, is blown up into a big thing. Look, Rodgers is at peace with where he's at, man. He just, he gives, doesn't he give off that vibe? He's in complete control. He's loving it. He's at, you know, the, the, the second end of his life. He knows the end is kind of drawn in. He would love to be able to sail off into the sunset and say, you know what? This is my last year. It's been great to be able to wave to the, the Lambeau field and say, I'm done. And we all shed a tear and we wish him good well, or farewell, goodbye, good well, fair by, all that stuff. And then, you know, Jordan Love comes in and we, we welcome him graciously. I'm sure some of you will be vile, even though it's, he literally did nothing wrong and Rogers left on good terms. But it's just, there's just this natural inkling in people that are slightly subhuman to just say, I'm going to boo that man because he's not Aaron Rodgers, even though he's a Green Bay Packer and he's on our team and he's representing this team and we want him to succeed. I'm still going to treat him like garbage because that's just just something in me that feels like that's the right thing to do. But aside from those people, we welcome with open arms and he plays and he's great. Or we have a different quarterback that plays and is great. I don't know. If we want to avoid the booing, Rodgers leaves. We have a terrible year. We draft this, the next Trevor Lawrence, and then we win forever. There'll be no booing of that for sure. Unfortunately for Jordan, considering the circumstances, similar to Aaron Rodgers' circumstances being drafted with a Hall of Famer sitting right there, it just some people are just going to hate you, and that's not going to change. And I'm, I, I hate that that's a reality, but it is. That would be great if that was a situation. Pretty unlikely that that's the exact situation we're facing, though. But I don't know. I mean, it's just... Look, and, and even Charles is just looking at it saying, this is, this is the way I'm, I'm thinking it might... And he's not even saying, I think it's going to go. Like, I've looked at it. I've looked at all the evidence, and I t- tend to think it's going to go this way. He's just saying, I could see it. I think it could be one of those situations. So yeah, maybe he's putting like 55, 60% on it, but it's just, I don't know. Again, just looking at it from all the different angles, I, I, don't, I don't see how. What is the thing that sets that off? Was well, he going to throw a fit if they draft defensive players? Like Rodgers doesn't appreciate having a good defense. The guy has never had a good defense for the most part in his entire career. Tom Brady's had top five defenses almost every year of his career and has won nothing but Super Bowls. I think he can appreciate the defenses. I don't think Rodgers is dumb. I don't think he's just sitting there going, give me a wide receiver or I quit. Dude's had some of the greatest wide receivers in NFL history, which is why that whole argument is so stupid. That is the dumbest thing. The national media will not let that go. Green Bay Packers have not drafted a first-round wide receiver in his entire career with Green Bay. You're making yourself sound stupid because look at how many elite wide receivers he's thrown to and not one of them is a first-round wide receiver. All these other teams drafting first-round wide receivers and those receivers suck. And you're saying the Packers are wrong? Number one offense in the NFL, you dense piece of garbage. Talk to me more about your first-round wide receivers. I mean, they're like robots. They're like zombies. Like, you can't even see the picture right in front of you. It's just, first round wide receiver. They're coming for you, Rogers. First round wide receiver. Dude, just literal zombies everywhere. I mean, and, 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 and again, I hate to attack the national media because some people get offended because it's some connotations. I don't care. Sports writers who should know better, who who make a living doing this. 
My entire dream, so yeah, I'm a little upset about it. My entire dream is to be able to do football for a living. These guys do football for a living, and they suck at it. They look at the situation with Aaron Rodgers, in which he has had some of the best, of all the things, he's had many, many years of no run game, many, many, many years of zero defense, many years of really terrible coaching and everything else antiquated systems under Mike McCarthy. So many things he's handcuffed by. One of the very few things he hasn't been handcuffed by, offensive line and wide receiver. Those have been the big, no help from tight ends, running backs, um, you know, defense as a whole. Special teams has historically been pretty terrible outside of Mason Crosby. All these things you can pick on. One of the few things that has never really been terrible is wide receiver. And all we hear is Rodgers has been so oppressed by not having first-round wide receivers. Has he had good receivers? Oh, yeah, they've been great, but not first round. What is wrong with your brain? And I'm not saying don't draft a receiver in the first round. If you want to do it, if they're the top guy, I don't. there's nothing wrong with having two elite wide receivers just like getting corner. Like, if you get two Jairs, am I going to be mad? No. Do you need two Jairs? No. Do you need two Devontes? Of course not. Nobody, Literally nobody has two Devontes. I don't know if in NFL history, if the Packers had just drafted Justin Jefferson, that may have been the best duo in NFL history. I don't know if there's ever been two, like a one and number, a number one and a number two on the same team ever. Maybe. I mean, like, legit. Not like accidental. I think the Vikings were pretty close a couple years ago with Thielen and Diggs. Maybe like one and two, but I mean, that was like a fluky thing. Thielen was not like a number one or a number two. Diggs is good, but I mean, he's not like best in the NFL good. I'm talking like legit. The, the, you would actually like, I don't know, if DeAndre Hopkins and Julio were on the same team in like 2017 or something, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like they're just on the same team. Not because of a trade or anything. We just, we just drafted both of them. And that, it's, it's, it's not necessary. And, and that's why I also think this wide receiver thing is dumb. Nobody has that. The Packers, for some reason, are set this are, are given this unrealistic standard. They have one of the best wide. They have the best wide receiver in football, arguably. As a result, considering Lazard is a decent number two, one of the more competent wide receiver groups in the NFL. But yet, the standard for Green Bay is two Devontes or you suck. Nobody else has that standard. Nobody else. We just have to pretend that the standard. Oh my goodness! It's four o'clock. I'm not even, how is it four o'clock? Anyways, whatever. You get, you get the point. It's such a stupid thing. And I'm not mad if you're saying I want a wide, I want a wide receiver. I would love another wide receiver. The Packers want another wide receiver. They wanted to go get Fuller. I'm not attacking you. I just don't understand the general narrative that the Packers suck if they don't get this elite number two. That is not, that is an unfair standard that nobody else is held to, but the Packers, Gutekunst is trashed for it. Because he alone is being held to a standard that nobody else is being held to, and it makes no sense whatsoever. The Raiders. The Raiders are not trashed even a fraction of the amount the Packers are for their wide receivers. They don't even have a number one. But you know what? They drafted a first-round wide receiver. They've put a lot into wide receiver. And so they get a pass. Which is, again, how stupid is this? If you just try and fail, that's fine. If you succeed and don't try, you suck right? Like we put no effort into it and dominate and we suck. The Raiders put effort into it, suck, but they're fine because they're trying. They got one of our favorite wide receivers. Plus, if we say that they suck, then we look stupid because they're doing what we tell them to do. They drafted one of the wide receivers we said is going to be one of the greatest. So we can't come back and say that the Raiders are stupid and the Packers are right because then we look like idiots. And the last thing we want to do is let everyone know that we're idiots, even though everyone already knows, but we got to keep up the facade which, by the way, is why you're getting inaccurate information on ESPN and all that. When I give you PFF grades and all this other stuff and you get mad, like, that's not true. Nobody's saying that. Right, because they don't want you to know that they're stupid. So they're lying to you. We got to take a break. Obviously, don't have a lot of time on the other end, but we'll do what we can do. It's just going to be one of those days, I guess. But I set a couple goals yesterday. In the Facebook group, I had made a post and I said, you know, I showed a little arrow to the invite thing. And I said, let's, let's invite some people. We're at 1,000 what was it? 1,295 people. Can we get to 1,300? In other words, can we invite five people to the group? I asked almost 1,300 people if they could invite some people and and see if we can get five more people by the end of the day. Also on the podcast, I had said, can we get to 200 patrons? Because I think we were at 178, I guess it was. Take a wild guess which one won yesterday. (laughs) I would have bet $1,000. The Facebook group would far outpace Patreon. We went from 1,295 to 1,296 members in the Facebook group, and we got two new patrons. 
Now, I'm not complaining about it. If Patreon outpaces the Facebook group, I'm going to be happy with that. But I'm I'm just a little, little stunned, I guess. But thank you very, very much to Steve Woltering and Jack Felser for jumping in on Patreon. I really, really appreciate your support. We are 20 shy of the goal of 200, and the plan, I think, if I remember, is to get there before the season starts. So we're on a pretty solid path. We literally only need about one more patron a week, minus people that leave, and we're going to hit that mark. So patreon.com forward slash pack underscore daddy really, really helps me out. And again, be nice to get to 1,300 people. We're on pace to get there in about a week at at this rate to get the last four. I don't know. Whatever. It is what it is. I will say my my NFL uh, NFL draft group has 4,200 people, and so um, you guys are just getting embarrassed right now. Well, if you guys want to put up with that from a bunch of from a bunch of drafty guys, but you know whatever. Anyways, we jeez, I don't even know if we have time. It's ten it's ten after right now. Uh, I don't know what to do. We'll take a break and we'll we'll do a little bit on the other side. That's all I can do. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news. So don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. I want to tell you guys real quick about our new sponsor, Factor. Factor makes delicious, ready-to-eat meals, and they get sent right to your door. They have 35 different options every single week that you can choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. There's no prep work. There's no messing up six different bowls, mixing stuff. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat and eat. No prep, no cook, no cleanup. Factor is also very flexible with your schedule. You can get as much or as little as you need by choosing between 6 to 18 meals per week. You can also pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved. So head to factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 and use code packdaddy50 to get 50% off. That's code packdaddy50 at factormeals.com slash packdaddy50 to get 50% off. All right, so let's do question of the day. Um, I had asked the question, tell me one player you want the Packers to draft. So it's kind of the opposite of the last question of the day, which is who do you think they're going to pick this is who do you want them to pick? Well, <laughs> I hate to even bring this up, but the computer just froze on me. I, I feel like it's telling me that I need to just get out of here, but we'll, we'll try to run through this. So we'll, we'll start over here. Um, as I said that you didn't hear, Shane, we'll start at the bottom with one vote and work our way up. Wants 2-2 two, two out well. And again, it doesn't have to be, I shouldn't say again, I, again for me, not for you. It doesn't have to be first round picks. Just who do you like? So Shane starts off, says 2-2 Atwell, big fan, not going to be a first-round pick. I think it's going to be later because I think he's going to be seen largely as just a gadget guy, but fantastic for what Matt LaFleur wants to do. TJ says Alim McNeil, a big Snacks Harrison type guy, I think would be fantastic. Again, probably going to be later because he's limited by just being that kind of a guy, but still kind of awesome. Kevin jumps in and says Trey Brown. So Trey Brown, I had to look up. Um, And again, put your stamp on whoever you like, but he's a cornerback out of Oklahoma, Smaller guy, kind of getting up in age. He's pushing 24 years old. Doesn't grade out super well. He's actually going backwards from, I think, PFF is gone now. I could pull it up. I don't have time. 77 to 71, back down into the 60s. Statistically, he was fine. I think he had about a little under a 50 passer rating when targeted. Didn't give up a ton of yards, like 200 and something. Only gave up one touchdown. I think it was two picks, three pass breakups, something like that. Billy wants Eric Stokes, cornerback out of Georgia. Jeff said he would like Phillip Brooks, wide receiver slash kick returner. So let's check that guy out. So uh, wide receiver at 5'7", 167. So, I mean, he, he better be a good kick returner. So let's see. As a kick returner, he's got uh, over three years, 23 returns, 481 yards. His longest was 44 yards. 20.9 yards per attempt is not great. Remember, if you take a knee, you go out 25 yards. Most people can't get it past 25 yards on average. But the good ones you want, you know, they're, they're around like 26-ish. 20 is, is not very good. He 
He did get to 22.7 in 2019, but he's never really graded out very well as a kick return. Uh, zero touchdowns. He's got no muffs, so he has never dropped it, which is great. He does actually seem to be a bitter, uh, a little bit better of a punt returner. 23 returns, 388 yards, uh, 37 fair catches, 66 was his long, 66 yards was his longest. 16.9 yard average is pretty solid, and he's got three touchdowns as a punt returner. So I kind of feel like that's going to be where he is. Probably not a kick returner, but a punt returner, which makes more sense for a smaller, shiftier guy. Kick return is more straight line, just you know, taking off like a rocket. Usually, usually tend to be a little bit bigger. But he had a 90 overall punt return grade in 2020. 13 returns, 260 yards, 55 was his longest, 20 yard average, and two touchdowns. So yeah, that'd be cool. Um, what else we got here? Uh, Tim says Ryan Schlipp. That would be great. Thank you very much. Actually, it's uh, Tim posted it, and uh, Gary jumped on the bandwagon there and said he would be into that. So I appreciate the the vote of confidence. If you want to hit up the Packers and let them know that I am available. Again, I don't think it's going to work. Well, maybe it will. I think you get one year of eligibility. And I don't know, do you have to like declare and then that's your year? Or I don't know how that works, but uh, I, I'll declare. We'll see what happens. Andy and John said they want Jabril Cox. I'm 100% on board with that. I'm a huge fan. If we get Jabril in the second round, I'm going to do so many backflips. I'm going to lose my mind. Now, granted, again, most linebackers don't usually pan out, but I mean, this is just the kind of guy that the Packers haven't really gotten before. I mean, it's it's the kind of guy that they've tried to get, right? He's not great against the run, but he's real good at getting coverage. They've tried that a million times, usually with guys that are not very good, but they're fast, so maybe they can be good, like, you know, seventh-round picks or Oren Burks, which is a third-round pick, but a reach. This guy's, like, really good at it, though. Uh, Pedro and Scott want Kadarius Toney. Again, I'm, I'm very much on board with that. I love it. Um, extremely shifty, yard-after-the-catch guy, but also a deep threat. I mean, come on. Goose and Jordan want Kyle Pitts, so they uh, obviously like dreaming. Getting up to three now, TJ Hull, Josh, and Jake. I don't know why TJ gets uh, the last name treatment, but I just, I just, it just happened. They want Quinn Miners, the uh, UW-Dub, the Whitewater Center. That would be fantastic just because, you know, again, I, I love everybody that's coming out of Whitewater. I was super jacked about Kumaro because he was a Whitewater guy. I was the first ever Kumaro bandwagoner. I shouldn't say first ever, but, you know. Before the the general Kumaro love kind of came out, um, Ben, Mark, Alex, and Ko um, like Tevin Jenkins. I think that's a fantastic pick. There's a lot of skepticism about Tevin Jenkins, thinking maybe that's not the greatest option, but uh, I would be 100% on board with that. Tyler, Dalton, Daniel, and Daniel Duffy and Telby. So. That's how you get your last name on there. Vote with somebody that has the same first name. They want Penny Sewell. Again, dreaming. Um, we got, just to show how serious this is, <laughs> also four votes, Levi, Ben, Chad, and Evan for a quarterback. At, you know, LOL. Um, Rob, Kurt, Dominic, Joseph, Jonathan, and Derek said that they would like Asante Samuel. Real big on that. I wanted to get real big into Asante Samuel today, but again, we're out of time. So we'll have to save that for tomorrow. Um, there's been a big controversy about his RAS not being at the Packers threshold, et cetera, et cetera. So I wanted to kind of weigh in on that, but the big winner, and we've got 17 votes here, Kenneth, Ernie, Mike, Cody, Jason, Nick, Dylan, Roger, Quentin, Garrett, Nick, Christopher with two F's, Brandon, Jude, Corey, Eric, and Andy all want Rashad Bateman. Now that that's sort of, I think Rashad Bateman is that one guy that you're thinking he's too good for us. In other words, he should be gone. But if we can get him, that'd be sweet. Now, it depends on your assessment of Rashad Bateman. There are people in draft Twitter that that like him as, like, one of the best. I haven't heard them say this in a long time, especially since, like, Chase's testing has come out. But some people have had Rashad as wide receiver one. I don't think any of the big wigs out there have done that, but some of the other guys have, you know, some of the... I don't want to say lesser tier because I don't want to be a jerk about it. Maybe they may be just as good or better. I don't know. But the guys that are trying to break in, you know, those guys, um, some of them have had Rashad Bateman as, like, wide receiver one. So for that reason, I've kind of said he's he's kind of probably out of our reach. But if he's there or if the Packers trade up, and I, somebody just posted this, and I could absolutely see it happening where this there's this big groundswell of Rashad Bateman. And you start hearing the announcer say, I'm surprised Rashad is there. And then the Packers trade up, and it's like, this could, this has got to be for Rashad Bateman. Fantastic, da-da-da-da-da, and they take somebody else. I think in their example, we took, uh, geez, I'm blanking on names now. Come on. Christian Barmore. That's what I was thinking. Speaking of, one of the most interesting things about this whole exercise, in my opinion, 
there's very little overlap between who I think the Packers are going to take and who I want the Packers to take. Now, granted, maybe not the exact same voters. I mean, we don't, we've got, again, almost 1,300 people in the group, and we've got, what, 50 people voted? But Christian Barmore was by far the number one vote, and uh, he didn't get a single vote on here. Nobody said they want Barmore the most. Same goes for Greg Newsom. He was very high on the list. Nobody voted for Greg Newsom. Asante Samuel would be about the only kind of overlap. I mean, there's there's overlap. I mean, Tevin Jenkins and those guys had gotten um, votes, but it's pretty interesting. So it really goes to <laughs> what he was saying. If we trade up, um, and it's Rashad Bateman territory, and everybody thinks it's Rashad Bateman, and we end up taking Christian Barmore, Packer fans are probably going to be real mad. But I can't imagine they'd be super mad. I mean, that's still exciting. But anyways, I really got to get out of here um, very, very late, and I also don't want this to freeze slash crash on me again. So you folks have yourselves a fantastic Thursday. I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye-bye.